What is up, Tube Tube? Welcome back to Low Guido's Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster channel on the tubes. And tonight on the bench, we have got this wonderful piece of equipment. It is the SIG MCX um, gel blaster. It looks fan. Fantastic. I cannot, uh, I don't know if I can explain how good this looks and feels. Every, like it feels so nice. This is, um, this is a blaster from Watt International. Uh, I believe it's just basically a, um, <laughs> basically an LDX basic inside here. I can see the blue, I can see the telltale blue already through the, through the trigger hole and the the uh, QD hole in the back here, where they where the for some reason you can see all the way through to the gearbox. It looks real nice. We got some uh, we got the extending stock here, so you got a few positions of extension on that stock. But when it's nice and short, it is a nice compact little close quarters type beastie um, nice and easy to slide that out strong nylon here nylon here steel here this whole upper and handguard is aluminium nice rail this lower is this lower aluminium yeah this lower feels uh, alloy I should say alloy not aluminium someone Keeps calling. Someone calls me out on that one because I say aluminium instead of alloy. I feel like this. This feels like alloy. Nylon pistol grip. Nice curves. Nice. Uh, what 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 shall we call this? Elongated trigger guard. Good for getting them gloved fingers in there. Um, ambi. Ambi fire select. That actually is ambi. Let's see here. Um, all the little logos, serial numbers, the engraving is very nice. Let me get a close up for you. Look at these details. Grip. Magwell. The aluminium handguard. I, I don't like how you can see the battery wires in the handguard. That kind of that kind of ruins it for me. But um, very nice details. Looks like the uh, the mag release is actually ambi as well. Nice, nice, nice. Speaking of the battery in the handguard, um. How do I get to it? It looks like, um, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like you need to punch the pin to get. There we go, yes. So, I mean, that is quite nice actually, the way it slides off like that. Um, to get access to the battery compartment, you need to pop the front takedown pin, because it does go through this loop. Um, that could be annoying if you need to field change batteries. Uh, popping that pin is no mean feet you will need a punch of some sort it's not something you can just press with your finger so tools required to change battery not a great thing in my books um, super sexy though it's got this gas tube here which is completely useless but like look at it I don't know it looks looks cool looks like it's an adjustable gas block up the front here as well it's uh, nice details, but again, not really 
I don't do anything. It just, it just doesn't serve any purpose uh, other than potentially getting in your way when you're trying to fit a large battery. Now, I don't know what size battery I could fit in there. I've got a little 7 volta here that uh, might be able to tuck in there. Hopefully. Uh, mine. Alright, oh no, wait, do we? No, I'm not in the rails on the other side. Ah, oh, man. So already... This, this is the smallest battery I own, by the way. Um, I can't get it in. Um... No. No, there is no... No. There's no way I can fit that handguard on with the battery connected. Which means we'll be chronoing this without a handguard. Um... But... I guess it doesn't really matter for our purposes for just testing the chrono. Uh, don't need a handguard for that. Uh, on speaking of the chrono, let's load up this mag and uh, do that. It is a looks like a standard LDT mag. It's one of those ones that I can't open without a tool. All right, so um, pour your gels in there. Obviously, if you have it, I often skip over this step. I often go straight to the chrono and people actually who are new to gel blasters might not actually know that this is where you pour the gels in. You open this up and pour the gels in here. Um, I just assume that most people know that but but it, I, st I do get a lot of questions. How do I fill the mag up? So yeah, you pop that open, fill them up and then they'll feed out of this tube here. Alright, so I'm going to do that now. Fill up the mag and then we'll hit the chrono and see what she does. Alright, here we go. Alright, I'll give a full auto burst for good measure. Uh, we are averaging around 300 currently. Alright, uh, still fairly consistent 300s. Nice, nice and consistent 300s. Alright, well, 300 average. Not a bad little kick out of the LDX Basic that's uh, sitting in there. Um, another thing that I might mention while I'm here is the uh, the dust cover does not seem to stay put of its uh, of its own. Uh, so that opens up, but you can never really close it again without manual intervention. I find that I've got to sort of manually push this in to get it to close again and then if you pull the charging handle again it opens and you don't get it closed again but uh, I mean that's not uncommon for these blasters I, surely it wouldn't be too hard to I don't know tune that little mechanism so that it works a bit better uh, but that's something for you something that you can do at home for yourselves I might take a look at what I can do to sort that out myself. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned Ambi mag release. Definitely has the Ambi mag release. And it's got a bolt 
released there, but it doesn't seem to... <laughs> Here I am going to open this again. doesn't seem to catch that um, faux, faux bolt in there. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to and this one's just not catching or or whether it's a it's a thing that just it just doesn't have that feature I'm, I'm not sure this one doesn't seem to work um, the stock do like this folding stock it's cool and another feature of the SIG is uh, the, the the back of this is not a buffer tube it's a pick rail so check this out So, look at that. That's kind of cool. Hey, you know what else is kind of cool? Uh, in the back of this pick rail, it looks like there is a hex key. Yeah, look at that. Is that going to do what I think it does? that hex key something to do with the gearbox spring release or something maybe I'll, I'll look into that a bit further it doesn't seem to it's quite tight it doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to turn so maybe I'll have a look at that when I get further deeper down into this um, yeah, let's take it apart, see how she ticks. Alright, we're going to start by punching the pins. I've already done this once, but... Now keeping in mind, being that this is an LDX split box, this pin in the back, which is retained, mind you, as is the front. The um, the back one will also be carrying the top half. So um, uh, I assume that the top half of the receiver should now pop now that there's no pins in it. I assume uh, once this front pins out that the whole upper should slide forward. It is a very nice tight tolerance. I might have to pull this charging handle sometimes that uh, releases. Ah, oh, there we go. It's a very nice tight tolerance with front wired things as always. You've got to be careful when you're pulling the, the upper off because you can get your wires caught uh, and nobody wants caught wires in their receiver. You can get, oh man, this thing's bugging me already. Please. Um, looks like that plug won't fit through, but they do have some uh, disconnects here by the looks. Man, I got no time for this. I'm putting the Deans on it anyway. There we go. There is connectors here, but they're really, really tight. And they've been heat shrunk over the top of, which makes them even more difficult to deal with. So, whatever. I'll just put a Deans on it. Be done. Uh, Alright, what have we got? Um, so we'll get the motor out. Now it does seem to have an interesting little little um, semi quick release sort of thing here. It's got a, what looks like a pin in the back. So it's like it's kind of a Kind of quick release, but but not. So you got a pin here, which pops out, and then does that 
hinge forward or do you still have to undo the screw? Still got to undo the screw. That's interesting. They've gone with a quick release style hinge door on the bottom like that. See, it's got the hinge. Oh, it's actually not hinged. There's no pin through here. That's a fake pin. I thought I thought this was a pin. I thought that was a hinge, hinge pin, but it's not. Yeah, they get ya, they trick ya. So it's not hinged. All right, it looks like it's hinged, but it's actually not. It's held in with a roll pin, in, a push pin in the back, and a screw in the front. So there you go. Um, cross bushing inside there with with a thread, threaded bushes. Love some bushes. Uh, just gonna get these wires out and then see if we can drop this motor out without too much dramas sometimes they're a bit tight in these grips make sure the wires are out of the way if you do have them a bit tight in those grips if you've got like a small set of pliers or something soft grip you can actually slide it I slide it into this just there not there because you because you'll break the spring on your brushes and not there because you'll break the spring on your brushes but there is just a little gap just there where you can grab if you can grab so if you've got a tiny little pair of soft sort of not you know nothing jagged these are they're just they don't have any serrations on them and they're just nice and soft and you can sort of grab them and pull on the motor there I find that's handy sometimes they get caught up in there especially if the grips tight um, no markings on this motor it is a D uh, not, uh, sorry a O type not a D type so it's a push press press in pinion um, pinion looks to be in good nick and two Phillips head screws up in the grip as is tradition Alright, hopefully got them out, yes. Two Phillips screws. Okay. Interesting. We got the Ambi release. Ambi release mag release there. Uh, it does go through the gearbox and it's got Some sort of, some sort of screw arrangement on it. I haven't seen this type before. Um, I have to look into that. So that's got to come out. That pin's got to come out. All right, we'll roll with that pin first. It's always worth noting that they do go out in one direction. There is a knurled end and a smooth end so it's handy to uh, recognize your ends that looks that definitely looks like it's the knurled end all right there we go as you can see knurled end that side. Now, I'd say this um, this bolt release is going to have to come out uh, just because it's in the way a bit, and this mag release as well. I might pop these pins, at least the front pin, back in so it's not in my way, and the rear pin. There's a circlip which retains it. I might just see if I can get that one out just to make my life a little bit easier All right. so quick fell inside but I'll get it I'll get it out later
<laughs> All right, what do we got? We do have an ambidextrous, ambidextrous selector. So we'll probably remove the selector as well. What's that, a number 2.5? Don't forget to watch your detents. Although I didn't, it didn't feel like it had any detents when I when I turned it. So we'll see. Just open it nice and careful. No, no detents. No detents. It just uh, sort of centers itself on that. Okay, so. Okay, so it appears that what you've got to do to get this mag release out is you've got to push this all the way in, all the way in until this side pops up and then spin this around. Um, probably without the bolt release in it would make it a bit easier, I think. Um, yeah, so let's let's go with that. We'll get the bolt release out first, and then we'll spin that around. Um, so the bolt release is a pin straight through there. Yeah, very interesting. I've um I've seen similar designs like this in the past, but nothing quite this finicky. So okay, so we have to get the bolt release out just so that we can be actually spin this um, mag release and to get that we're going to need to punch this pin that goes through here out and do that with like a long pin punch or um, a nail or something I guess I've got what have I got All right, I got a long poker here Probably get that in, just gently tap it out. There we go. Alright, it's got like a little rubber, it's got like a little rubber stopper on it as well that holds it, which is cute. Alright, so now that's out, we should be able to get this up. And twist it all the way around. This is super awkward. Like, I feel like there should be an easier way of doing this. If there is, let me know in the comments. Alright, so that is that out and button and spring on the other side. Cool. Awkward though, awkward. All right, now. Oh, it looks like the fronts, the tops popped. But the back is still in. I might have to do the, uh, selector on this side. This one probably will have detents. Because this would be the main side and the other side will just have like the, yes, it does have a ball and spring detent there. Fortunately for me, they just stayed all together. Now, I think, if you can get this into the right position. Should come out. Alright, there we go. Just like that. And inside we have the LDX Basic with a very complicated ambi select fire mechanism. And a sort of custom select fire plate and of course the fancy front wiring which is actually quite neatly done like 
props to LDX Factory for putting that together. They actually did quite a good job on that wiring, uh, unlike every other LDX box I've ever seen in my life. Now I'll just pop this open, and uh, oh, there's the, the Ambi gear, and then the main one. Let's not get them mixed up, just in case there is a difference. I'm not sure that there is a difference, but we'll see. Um, and of course, <laughs> retrieve my circlip, which actually fell inside the box here. There it is, I can see it. Yeah, circlip, yay. All right. That goes on that pin there. Sweet! Uh, slightly more complicated than usual getting the box out. It'd be nice if you could, um, if all this would stay down and this would stay with the upper and you could just take it apart. But, I don't know, it might be asking too much. Alright, I'm just going to clean this up a bit and then we'll focus on what's going on in the box here. Okay, incidentally, um, uh, I don't know if you can see in here, there's two screws in here. One of them had actually come loose and was rattling around inside the upper. And they actually hold the, um, the faux bolt in place. So one of them had fallen out completely. So I just actually, just this one here, just tighten that back in. Um, and maybe that will fix a few of my um, charging handle issues that I was having. It also might... Uh, help the bolt really the bolt catch catch the bolt like it's supposed to maybe we'll see uh interesting uh setup here i don't know if you can see it's a bit dark in here there we go so uh dual springs upper and lower here never seen that that's just for the charging handle right. something i've always wanted to know will an ldx advanced, uh, no, expert, will LDX expert upper fit on a um, basic lower? Um, it looks like it should. Yeah, I think it should. The more you know. The more you know. So by that rationale, this... This upper should also fit on the Expert. Um, it's worth noting, this is one that is a heavier than this one and there's definitely a difference in materials I don't know what it is though 7075 they claim this one 7075 all right well let's take a look at the upper here pop this spring out spring which is Probably, it's got to be an M100, right? It's got to be an M100. It was pumping 300 FPS out of it. Um, let's pop these four screws out on the upper. Three and one on the other side. Four. Don't ask me why they put one on the other side. They obviously thought it was a good idea. Yep, there's another. There's five. Another one at the back end here. There's always one more screw. Yep, got all the screws out. 
That should pop open. Oh, there we go. Right. There's plenty of oil in this upper. There's an O-ring on the uh, nozzle. And the, the seal seems quite good. That's interesting. That seal is very good. Nice air seal on that. Um, so the top end's pretty good nick. Um, these return springs on the LDT stuff are pretty good. Haven't seen one break yet. Not that it's impossible, but yeah. All right, um, barrel. I've got the barrel here as well. Move this upper out of the way. Barrel. It's quite a shorty. It's uh, looks like 7.6, 7.6 in the diameter, and it is um, quite a short little. Get my measuring stick. 22 centimeters to the T. Yeah, so about 20, 22 in total. If you're doing mathematics. All right. Now let's have a look at this lower. I am very impressed by the by the wiring here. Not by the fact that it's front wired, that doesn't impress me, but but the the way they've done these mag terminals, it's fantastic. Why don't they do them all like that? It's cool. Nicely nicely tucked away and wire managed and everything. It's great. Looks good. Alright, I suppose. Pull this apart. Two millimeter screws here, three of them. And I was reading the comment section the other day. I do sometimes read the comment section. <laughs> someone someone watched one of my reviews and they were like, just take it out of the box and shoot it. You don't have to take it apart. Clearly they haven't seen any of my videos before. Because yes, I have to take it apart. It's what I do. Oh, let me just check that rack. Check out that rack. It is a metal rack. Just uh well, while I think about it, I was just looking at it going, oh, I didn't check if that was a metal rack or not. It is. It's a metal rack. Which is interesting. Um, did the basic always have a metal rack, or has that been an upgrade lately? Speaking of which, why is the SIG coming with a basic? Why would they not just, I don't know, spend the extra 50 bucks or whatever it is? What is, what is the price difference between a basic and a and an expert. Just put the expert in. Why? Why not? Alright. Oh look at that, all the shims are on the top side. So uh, we've got a set of gears that are the uh, sintered variety and a basic uh, just a basic trigger trolley mechanism all manual, all mechanical all metal um, noticeable difference in uh,
quality between these and the gears in the Expert. The Expert does have a better set of gears in it. Um, all in all, I think the Expert is a better value box. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's good. But um, I don't, yeah, I don't know why. For a top end blaster like this, this is this is a really good, it's a really good blaster. Don't get me wrong, but like everything's so nice, and then they've got the basic in here. Why not just go the whole hog? Put the put the expert in. Yeah. Oh, nice and clean. The bottom half of these boxes is quite good. The uh, I, the top end of these cast top end the the one issue that I've found with these they tend to they tend to crack around here. Uh, here, <laughs> pointing off camera, points off camera, Guido points off camera again, this is what I do best, alright, well, nice blaster, pretty good gearbox, I mean good good for, good value I guess, um, I don't know why they didn't just go with the, with the expert though, throw the expert in there, just be done with it. Um, alright, now I guess I've got to put all this back together. Alright, all back together. Parting thoughts. Quality. Excellent. I knew as soon as I felt and touched this, that this thing was made in Taiwan. It's just got that next level made in Taiwan feel about it. Um, None of the Chinese made stuff that I've seen so far is on the same level. This is up there with probably the best, if not second best quality of build, uh, external and otherwise, of any blaster I've ever seen. The, just the, like when the um, upper connects with the lower there, there's, there's dowels that, um, locate the upper and everything there's no gaps here this is all every single uh, very 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 tight tolerances every single piece fits together perfectly the pins are some of the tightest pins they just fit like so tight um, very 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 nice quality the gripes are difficult to take down you've got to remove all these fiddly little pins, this thing, you gotta remove this, you gotta spin this mag release around a bunch of times, which is a pain. I guess it does give it a nice uh, fastener free look to it, but um, I don't know, is it worth it? I'd just rather just have the screw on the outside personally. Um, the uh, selectors are a little bit finicky with the ambi uh, gears and whatnot. Uh, to get the uh, gearbox out and the gearbox itself I think they could have if you know they've gone this far why not just throw the expert in throw it in there um, but other than that absolutely fantastic little blaster um, amazed I'm yeah this is probably this is definitely up there with the best blaster I've ever seen um, I think like uh, probably my Favorite and best blaster to date is the the modify, and I gotta say this is up there. This is up there with the modify. Um, yeah, what can I, what more can I say? I, I really I really like it. It's it's not perfect. Oh, and I did play around with that piece in the back there. You know how I found that there's a circle in the back underneath that pick rail that looks like it could have like a buffer tube or something. I, or, I don't know spring access. It appears to be super glued in, so uh, whether it was supposed to be a removable option for something, but now it's super glued in, I'm not really sure what that's about. I'm sure someone, if you know, tell me in the comments. Um, but yeah, I, I looked on it inside and there's no thread or anything, and it seems to be super glued in, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But um, yeah, I, everything about this, I, I really like it, I really, yeah. I don't have many bad things to say. It is one of the best. Anyway, that's all for me. If you do like what I'm doing, hit hit the subscribe button. Subscribing's free. Just hit it. Like the more the merrier. I don't, I'm I'm not even going to force you to watch my videos if you 
you don't want to watch them, don't watch them, but like just hit that sub button, it helps me out, hit the like button, uh, and if you do want to buy a patch from me, hit me up on the face page, like Guido's Chopters, I can uh, organise to get that patch to you, and shout outs to all those who have bought me a coffee recently, there is a link down the bottom there, if you did want to buy me a coffee, uh, shout outs to Adam Hoy and Peter Stuckings, Cheers. Catch you later.